SpaceX's Crew Dragon, the game changer in the Russian-American space race, wowed the world as it has flown more astronauts than anyone else since its debut. Not only that, what's inside the Dragon capsule shocked NASA's astronauts more than any other vehicle. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. How did SpaceX design the Dragon capsule? Why is it better than Soyuz and Starliner? Why did all the astronauts prefer Dragon? Until now, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft proudly stands as the sole American capsule capable of carrying astronauts to orbit. It plays a crucial role for NASA in research and maintenance endeavors aboard the International Space Station. Dragon has successfully launched a total of 42 astronauts to the ISS, including 28 NASA astronauts and others on private missions. It recently completed its 11th crewed mission since the inaugural crewed launch in May 2020. Not only does it develop with overwhelming statistics that no one else can match, but SpaceX's Dragon also demonstrates comfort and reliability that makes many astronauts exclaim with joy. Soichi Noguchi is one of the world's most experienced active astronauts. The 58-year-old astronaut from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency has completed three space missions. Firstly, on the U.S. Space Shuttle in 2005, then aboard the Russian Soyuz spaceship in 2009, and most recently, he became the first person to fly on SpaceX's Crew Dragon for NASA's inaugural Crew-1 mission. He's only the third person in history to have flown in three different spacecraft. When asked which was his favorite, Noguchi didn't hesitate. The Dragon's the best. I feel Dragon's really ready to go up. It's really fun to ride, and two days in Dragon is really remarkable memories. The first time Musk unveiled the seven-seat Crew Dragon concept was at an event at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California in May 2014. Unlike the three parts called modules of the Soyuz capsule, Crew Dragon just includes two sections as well. There's the crew module and the trunk. The crew module is designed like the Apollo command modules that carried astronauts to the moon. The trunk has solar panels, heat removal radiators, space for cargo, and fins to provide stability during emergency aborts. Together, the capsule and trunk stand around 8.1 meters tall, with a diameter of 4 meters, a little bigger than Soyuz. As a result, it gives the astronauts more space. A Soyuz just has room for three people to ride in. Meanwhile, a Crew Dragon includes seating for up to seven astronauts, although NASA won't be using more than four at a time for the commercial crew program. Regardless, it still has more capacity than the Soyuz. It's much too small and tight, complains Dutch European Space Agency ESA astronaut Andre Kuipers of Russia's spacecraft. Regarding Boeing Starliner, although it has many aspects comparable to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, it lacks the most important thing, reliability. While Starliner is a completely new spacecraft, Crew Dragon, as of 2023, is the only U.S. human-rated orbital transport spacecraft, the only reusable orbited crew spacecraft, and the only reusable orbital cargo spacecraft currently in operation. This alone is enough for astronauts to prioritize SpaceX's spacecraft. What's more, as in SpaceX engineer John Federspiel said, the company had wanted to make Crew Dragon feel like a 21st century spaceship. He explains, Probably one of the biggest features of Dragon are the touchscreens on the inside. We designed them not just to be very functional, but with a user experience in mind. NASA's old Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules were very much designed with an airplane cockpit in mind. Their sheet metal instrument panels were studded with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way he'd fly a plane, with a controlled stick determining velocity, altitude, and direction. The Dragon's designers swept all that away, replacing everything, including the control stick, with three large touchscreens facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up as many as 10 sets of displays, allowing the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. After all, this is the millennial generation. As Doug Hurley said, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission, which launched in May of 2020, said, You have an overall systems page on the screen, and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages, and SpaceX may have added more since my last flight. With any aircraft or spacecraft, you always iterate because it makes sense and it's easy and it'll help the crew. Ideally, the spacecraft helps the astronauts so much that they have virtually nothing to do with the ship operating entirely autonomously. 
And if automation doesn't take care of a problem, then the ground's your next layer of defense, says Hurley, referencing SpaceX ground controllers who can problem solve and issue commands to the spacecraft from the comfort of mission control. Only if the Dragon fails to look after itself and the ground staffers can't solve the problem will the astronauts take over. That's the case, too, when it comes to the most critical aspect of commanding the spacecraft, flying it. The Dragon features a full-time autopilot program requiring no astronaut intervention. The Crew Dragon lifts off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center on a version of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket that's been adapted for astronauts. In the event of an emergency on the pad or during the climb to orbit, the launch escape system will fire to propel the capsule and its crew away from the rocket. Parachutes are then deployed to bring the astronauts down safely. NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins, who joined in Crew-1 mission, echoed Noguchi's comments about the exhilaration of launching on board the Crew Dragon. When you're sitting there on the rocket as it's going through the fueling process, you know, there are noises and vibrations, and in many senses, just you can tell it wants to get off the ground. It just leaped off the pad. It was amazing. Another Crew-1 member, NASA astronaut Victor Glover, also shared a few words about his experience on Crew Dragon. It was awesome. Dragon porn forms superb, Glover said, adding, once the stage was cut off and you're floating, I've been able to feel that for a few seconds, but to have it for an extended period was truly amazing. There were no problems, and when the Crew Dragon docked with the station. The thing that really stood out to both of us, and we mentioned it as soon as we docked, is we didn't feel the docking, Hurley said. It was just so smooth. He adds that the capsule design is safer than a winged vehicle under most circumstances. During missions to the ISS, the SpaceX vehicle docks with the orbiting outpost autonomously. That is, without having to be guided by a human. When astronauts are ready to return home from the space station, Crew Dragon first undocks and then performs a deorbit burn with its thrusters. After the fiery re-entry phase, the spacecraft needs to deploy four parachutes to slow its descent. Finally, the Crew Dragon splashes down in the Atlantic Ocean, 450 kilometers off the coast of Florida, where recovery ships will take the astronauts to safety and then retrieve the capsule. Shane Kimbrough, commander of the Crew-2 mission, described the pure acceleration of the SpaceX Crew Dragon launch to the space station in an interview with CBS News. So we're sitting on the launch pad, obviously, and when the engines lit, we all started laughing just because it felt so awesome and powerful. Shortly after that, we started accelerating, heading uphill. It was a great ride, very smooth. I don't remember any surprises, except we were just all happy. We were all pretty excited to be in orbit again and feel that incredible acceleration. Kajel Lindgren, the NASA commander of the spacecraft, also had the same opinion. He said after landing, SpaceX from Freedom, thank you for an incredible ride up to orbit and an incredible ride home. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.